Hi, my name is Dr. Arnie Advincula, and I'm a professor of obstetrics and gynecology, as well as a minimally invasive gynecologic surgeon. I completed my medical school training at Temple University School of Medicine in Philadelphia. Subsequent to that, I attended the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill, where I completed both an obstetrics and gynecology residency, as well as a fellowship in minimally invasive surgery. My specialty focus has been in the area of minimal access surgery, where in particular, I focus on the use of robotic surgery. I also focus my treatment on areas such as endometriosis, uterine fibroids, complex hysterectomy, as well as pelvic masses. What is endometriosis and how is it diagnosed? Endometriosis is a benign gynecologic condition where you actually find the endometrial tissue that is normally inside the uterus that you see at menstruation and it is found in other parts of the body. So you can find this type of tissue in the pelvis, in the ovary, and sometimes in upper parts of the abdomen. But what's even more interesting about it is that it can cause symptoms. And you can have anywhere from pelvic pain, bad menstrual cramps, infertility, and even pain with intercourse when you have a diagnosis of endometriosis. Diagnosis can be difficult to make. It's often done through a combination of a clinical evaluation as well as some diagnostic imaging and even surgery. Often, we'll ask the patient a series of questions to determine whether or not they may have some symptoms that are suggestive of endometriosis, such as the pelvic pain, the menstrual discomfort, pain with intercourse, and infertility. We then go ahead and do a pelvic exam where we sometimes might feel evidence of endometriosis, such as a pelvic mass, something in the ovaries, or even some nodularity that we might detect when we do the pelvic examination. Ultimately, we can supplement our clinical history and physical with radiologic imaging, things like an ultrasound or an MRI of the pelvis. But ultimately, the diagnosis is confirmed surgically with the use of laparoscopy, where we put a little telescope in your belly button and actually look inside the pelvis to see if we can find evidence of endometriosis. But most often, endometriosis is best handled and diagnosed by seeing somebody who's an endometriosis specialist. Those individuals are typically skilled in not only the history and physical part of determining if you have endometriosis, but also understand how to utilize different diagnostic modalities and ultimately even laparoscopy. What treatment options are available for endometriosis and which are the most successful? There are a wide variety of treatment options available for endometriosis. And when you look at it, you can actually break it down into medical treatment options as well as surgical treatment options. And in terms of success, it really at the end of the day boils down to individual treatment. Some options that may work really well in one patient may not work that well in another. Now, when we look at medical treatment options, or what I often call the pharmacologic approaches, you can have simple things such as combination birth control pills or single agent hormonal therapies like progesterone. We can even utilize innovative ways of delivering those medications, such as through an intrauterine device. Things like a Mirena IUD that is often used primarily for birth control can be used to treat some of the symptoms related to endometriosis. Additionally, there are some other drugs that are available, sort of what we call second and third tier, tier medications, one of which is aromatase inhibitors. Another one are medications such as GnRH agonist. One great example is something called Lupron, which actually gives you this sort of menopausal type state that can often help treat endometriosis symptoms. But there are various tiers that are available, as I said before, and one option may be extremely successful in one patient with a certain type of condition, and another option may not work as well, or may be better in a different patient. When you look at the surgical treatment options that are available, they can be both conservative or radical. Conservative being excising the endometriosis lesions, ablating them, removing adhesions, taking out cysts from the ovaries that relate to endometriosis, all the way to doing definitive surgical treatments such as hysterectomy and even at times taking the ovaries with the hysterectomy. Again, not every surgical treatment option is applicable to every patient. It really needs to be individualized so that the right medical therapy or surgical therapy is applied to the appropriate patient. Will a hysterectomy and or oophorectomy cure my endometriosis? The use of hysterectomy and or oophorectomy, which is basically removal of the ovaries, 
can that cure my endometriosis is often a question I get from my patients. And certainly it really is very much individual basis in terms of determining which is the right answer. So some patients will actually benefit greatly from just a simple hysterectomy because they have such bad menstrual cramps each month that may be related to their endometriosis. But actually leaving their ovaries behind is quite beneficial to them. There are other patients where doing both the hysterectomy and the ovarian removal is absolutely critical in order to treat their disease, particularly if they have very advanced stages of endometriosis where both the uterus and the ovaries are implicated in their symptomatology. If, for example, the ovaries are severely affected with large cysts, sometimes called chocolate cysts or endometriomas, and a cystectomy cannot be performed, then an oophorectomy in that patient may be the correct or the appropriate procedure to do. So when I'm asked the question, does a hysterectomy with or without ovarian removal cure my endometriosis, it's very much an individualized decision. And again, as with medical treatments, in some patients, that combination is going to work great, but in other patients, it may not be the right decision. Are there non-surgical treatment options that eliminate endometriosis? Although surgery is often utilized to treat endometriosis, it is important to understand that there are also non-surgical treatment options that can treat the disease. And these fall into the category of both hormonal-based as well as non-hormonal-based. Now, typical hormonal-based treatment options include things like combination birth control pills, single-agent hormonal therapies like progesterone, as well as innovative technologies like utilizing an intrauterine device that contains hormones to try to treat endometriosis. But sometimes we have to go the route of non-hormonal. And two great examples of that are one, utilizing what we call GnRH agonist or gonadotropin releasing hormone agonist, which is a category of drugs such as Lupron, which really give you a pseudomenopausal state while you're on that drug to try to treat the endometriosis. Another one is a category of drugs called aromatase inhibitors. Now this category of drugs actually works specific to endometriosis to try to eliminate a particular aspect of that disease process so that it can then in turn treat that diagnosis. And so these are the what we call non-hormonal treatment options. So there are certainly available non-surgical treatment options out there, both hormonally based as well as non-hormonally based. Following treatment, what can I do to prevent endometriosis from recurring? Preventing endometriosis from recurring after treatment is a question I'm often asked. And typically this comes after undergoing a surgical treatment. Now there are a lot of options available for a patient to try to help prevent endometriosis from recurring after a treatment such as a surgery. The first one that we often utilize is typically a hormonal based therapy such as a combination oral contraceptive pill or even a single agent hormonal therapy such as a progesterone agent. We've even utilized things such as intrauterine devices which have hormones embedded within them to try to help prevent endometriosis from recurring or at least control some of the symptoms that the patient may experience. There are also some non-hormonal based therapies such as aromatase inhibitors and even GnRH agonists such as Lupron that can help prevent endometriosis from recurring. Many times patients ask me is there a special diet or some type of exercise that I can follow that will allow me to not have to take hormones so I can try to prevent endometriosis from recurring. Well, the answer to that is not very clear, and often what I tell patients is that although the literature doesn't strongly suggest a particular diet or exercise regimen to follow, staying healthy is absolutely important when you're dealing with endometriosis. So eating properly and exercising will always have a positive impact on your over overall health, and by doing so, you'll be better suited to be able to handle the treatments and some of the symptoms that may be related to endometriosis. Can I use hormone replacement therapy to treat menopause symptoms if I have endometriosis? The role of hormone replacement therapy during endometriosis treatment is often something that comes up, particularly when patients are on pharmacologic treatments that induce menopause. One great example is the use of GnRH agonists such as Lupron. That type of treatment can often induce menopause, and when doing so, patients often have difficulty with the symptoms that they get. So hormone replacement therapy is something that absolutely can be used. And in the literature, what we have found is that utilizing hormone replacement therapy at the same time as a medical treatment such as Lupron has shown to be very effective. And why is that? Well, when you utilize both together, what you do is you improve compliance, first of all. 
a lot of times patients will stop utilizing treatments like Lupron or the GnRH agonist because they can't tolerate the menopausal symptoms. So by being able to give them some hormone replacement therapy, you're actually able to quell or mitigate those symptoms so they're not as severe and still get the benefit of the pharmacologic treatment targeting the endometriosis. So when asked this question, yes, you absolutely can use hormone replacement therapy to treat those menopausal symptoms if you have endometriosis. And you should definitely ask your doctor about that option so that you don't have to go through suffering from menopausal symptoms when you're undergoing endometriosis treatment.